now in the guitar community, there's this ongoing debate between analog versus digital. And this is nothing new. It's been going on for decades at this point, ever since modelers first started coming onto the scene in the 90s, really started to gain popularity. Guitar players have been arguing in online forums and green rooms in the back of vans or tour buses as to which is better, analog versus digital. Now, we're not going to take on that debate in this video because quite frankly, you either like the digital stuff or the analog stuff or you don't, and it's not really my job to try and convince you one way or another. I think you should play what you like. You should play what inspires you. You should play what you're interested in playing, whether that's completely old school analog tube everything or digital everything. It doesn't really matter to me. But in the last couple of years, we have seen this new style of product come on the market, which sort of bridges the gap between the analog and the digital worlds. And those are cab simulators. Now these come in all different shapes and sizes. You can have an IR loader load box like the Sur Reactive Load IR. You can have an attenuator with a DI out like my Tone King Iron Man 2. And then you have more complex designated units like the Universal Audio Aux Box and the one we're gonna look at today, the new Two Notes Captor X. So in today's episode of Gear Talk, we're going to take a look at the Torpedo Captor X, talk about the good stuff, the bad stuff, and compare it to the Universal Audio Aux. And I'm going to tell you which one I would buy if I was going to buy one. Now, before we get started, be sure to check out the links in the description box down below. You can find my tone course there, which is a video course I created to help people improve their electric guitar tone, whether you're on a tube amp or a modeler. You can also find links to the green room there, as well as links to the gear I use to make these videos. Those are affiliate links. So if you buy something, I make a small commission, which really helps me out in making these videos. And I should point out that Two Notes is not paying for this video. This is a unit I've had on loan for the past couple months when I'm done Done with this one, it gets sent off to another YouTuber for a review. They are going to send me a unit once these are in production to keep and use on the channel. This is actually a pre-production model. But Two Notes is not paying for this video or telling me what to say. All the opinions in this video are completely my own. With all that out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> things wrapped up into one box. It's a reactive load box, a virtual cabinet, an attenuator, and an impulse response loader. Essentially, this is designed to sit on top of or next to your guitar amp, a tube guitar amp, and essentially eliminate the need to run the actual speaker cabinet and mic the speaker up, whether that be on a gig or on a recording session or at home in your home studio or practice space. So essentially, you plug your amp in the back here and it acts as a reactive load. Now, if you don't know, Tube amps need a load on them. It's really bad to run a tube amp without plugging into some kind of load. In most cases, that's gonna be your speaker cabinet. But what if you wanna run your amp silently without a speaker cabinet? You're gonna need a load or else you run the risk of boiling your transformers and essentially ruining your guitar amp. Now you can go out of the torpedo into a speaker cabinet and essentially use it as a pass through with no attenuation, or you can attenuate or cut down the volume going to your speaker cabinet with this switch here. There's two levels of attenuation. But the main party trick of the Captor X is it's a virtual cabinet. It's using software and algorithms to emulate different speaker cabinets with speaker combinations and different microphones to essentially replace your cabinet when going into a front of house system at a gig or going into a recording DAW or an interface, anything like that. 
You can think of this as sort of like a hybrid setup. You have an analog tube amp with a modeled cabinet and speaker combination. But another cool thing about the Captor X is it's also an IR loader, meaning it will load and store impulse responses. If you're not familiar, an impulse response essentially is a digital snapshot of a particular cabinet and microphone and preamp combination as it was recorded when they captured the IR. You can kind of think of it as a Kemper profile, but for speaker cabinets. Now to control the Captor X, you really have to utilize the app that comes with it. You can load this on your smartphone, your tablet, or there is a computer app, which gives you a little bit more functionality and a little bit easier use. And you can connect this to your computer via USB here on the back. When using this at home, that's how I would use it. I primarily left it hooked up to my computer and really never touched the unit itself, just used the software. And in the app, you can pick different cabinets, different microphone combinations. You can move the mics around on axis, off axis. It also gives you control over things like EQ and twin tracking, and it lets you control the built-in reverb algorithms on the Captor X as well. And I actually really like the app. It's full featured, it's easy to use, and I didn't really have many connectivity issues on my phone connecting to the unit itself. Now I should point out that because this is a pre-production unit, I've been using the beta form of the app. So with depending on when you're watching this video in the future there will probably be different updates and things like that in the future So let's start with the good stuff, the stuff I like. First of all, this thing sounds really good. It genuinely does a good job of emulating the different speaker cabinets and combinations with the different microphones. It feels good. I like the fact that it's a reactive load. It retains the feeling and response of whatever amp you are playing through. And it's especially important when you're playing, I think, tube rectified amps that have a little bit softer response than maybe a solid state rectified amp. It sounds and feels great. The next thing I really dig about it is the form factor and size. Now, under normal circumstances, I'm a gigging guitar player. In fact, this week I was supposed to be on tour, but because of COVID, that's all been canceled or postponed. So unfortunately, I didn't get to test this out on the road, which is really what I wanted to do with it. But overall, the size and form factor makes this a much better piece of gear to gig and travel with than the Aux. It's smaller, it's a little bit lighter weight. I could fit this in a gig bag or some guitar cases, depending on what kind of guitar you have. That was one of the big issues I had traveling with the Aux on a few shows was it had to have its own case and it felt a little more fragile, a little less roadworthy than something like this. Also, I'm really glad they included the impulse response loader in this box. Now, I had a Skype call with the guys at Two Notes a few months ago when I first got my hands on this and they were really keen on playing down the IR loader in favor of their cab modeling technology and algorithm. And I understand that. You know, they probably put a ton of R&D and time into developing these algorithms and the software, and they really wanted to promote that side of it. But I actually think the IR loader is just as good as the cab feature, especially if you're coming from something like the Helix or Axe FX or Kemper, where you might already own some third party impulse responses. It's easy to just import them into here, or you can make your own impulse responses, which I actually made a video about a few weeks ago. You can check out here. The front panel is well laid out and easy to use. I also like these two controls here, the voicing and space control. The voicing essentially just lets you shift the mid range in different places to kind of dial in your tone really quickly without having to use the app. And the space control usually controls one factor of the reverb setup and you can actually configure it to control different 
parts of that reverb algorithm, which I think is really cool. The headphone out on this sounds really good, which is really important because that's how a lot of people are gonna use this in their homes, especially if you live in an apartment, to be able to play your tube amp through headphones is a really cool feature and a big reason why I think a lot of people are gonna buy something like this. And again, this is another sort of unique thing to people who are gigging and playing, but the power supply. Now this does come with its own wall wart power supply, but this runs on 12 volt DC 200 milliamp with a center negative plug, which means you could run this off of a pedal board power supply, something from Chox or Voodoo Labs or Strymon. Now, I don't know that I would put this on my pedal board or next to my pedal board, but in theory, you could run this off of something that outputs 12 volts at 200 milliamps with a normal pedal power supply plug. Pedal power supply plug. Surprised I got that sentence out on the first take. <laughs> Now the Captor X is imperfect. I've got a few issues with it. First and foremost being the attenuator. First of all, you only have three settings. Full, which is no attenuation. Medium, which is minus 20 dB of attenuation. And then low, which is minus 38 dB of attenuation. That's way too few options. And the attenuation and the medium setting is way too quiet. Even on small club stages, you'll find that the minus 20 dB attenuation, I think is too quiet. I think they should set the attenuator at maybe minus 10 to 15 dB for the medium setting. But minus 20 is too much. And then minus 38 dB, it's like your cabinet is almost off. Now I can understand that for bedroom players or if you're in an apartment or townhome and you have to be sensitive of the volume but in that case, why not just plug your headphones into this headphone port here and play silently? I think that's the biggest weak point of the Captor X is the attenuation function. The second gripe I have is with the onboard memory, and there's not a ton of it. I ran into an issue when trying to load my own impulse responses onto the Captor X. I could only get a handful of one of my cabinet packs on here at a time. So that means you're gonna to have to be really selective about which IRs you put on here and only use the ones that you use most regularly. Now, when it's plugged up via USB to your computer, you can navigate through your file structure and find and load the IRs that are on your computer, which is a nice touch. I just wish there was more memory on board the unit itself, but maybe that would have caused it to be bigger. I don't know, it's a trade-off. And my third gripe is with the onboard reverb algorithms. They're not bad, they're not terrible, but compared to the aux, which we'll get to in a minute, they don't hold up nearly as well. Now this may not be a big deal to you. The reality is, especially if you're on a gig, you probably don't wanna to run too much natural room ambience and reverb from the unit itself because you are in a room with its own reverb and ambience, but it's a nice feature to have when you're recording to simulate the cabinet sitting in a room. Now you have a lot of different options from studio sounds to a basement, to a loft, to cathedrals and plate reverbs. They just don't sound as three dimensional and clear as something like the reverbs on the aux box, for example. <laughs> Thank you. 
So how does the Torpedo Captor X stack up against the Universal Audio Oxbox? In some ways, this isn't a totally fair comparison because of the price difference. At the time of filming this video, the Torpedo retails for around $550 US, where the Ox retails for around $1,200 US. That's quite the price difference, putting them really in two completely different brackets for two different players and buyers. But when you look at the features and what these things do, they are pretty similar on paper. So how do they compare? Now, like I said earlier, I was able to take the aux on a few gigs this year, actually the only gigs I've been able to play so far this year, and I haven't been able to take the Captor X out. So I don't know how this thing works in a real world gigging workflow, but I can tell just by the form factor alone, this is gonna be much easier to travel with and to use on gigs or rehearsals or take to sessions. When I took the aux with me, I had to put it in its own special little Pelican case with its power supply. Now I should point out that at the time of making the aux video, I was borrowing that aux. And since then, Universal Audio saw that video, they liked it and they sent me one. So this is now mine to keep, uh, which thank you to them for that. That was very cool. Now I realize not everybody is gonna be gigging and playing sessions. So how do they sound compared to one another? In my opinion, the aux sounds better. Universal Audio did a really, really good job of nailing the sound of those cabinets and those microphones and making them feel like you're in the room recording in a high-end studio. Overall, I think the aux sounds better than the Captor X, but not by much, and certainly not twice as good as the Captor X. It's not a Certainly not a $650 difference. I legitimately had to pull my phone out and calculate that because I can't do math. Now, in terms of comparing the two apps and the software between the Aux and the Torpedo, they both are great. They're both easy to use. They both look good. The one problem that I consistently have with the Aux is the built-in Wi-Fi. When I have it connected to my computer and I'm recording, it's always dropping the connection and I'm having to reconnect it with the find my Aux button. It's really something that UA needs to address because it's become such an issue that it genuinely interrupts my workflow when I'm trying to record with it. Sometimes having to turn it off and turn it back on and close and relaunch the app, it's a huge pain, which I have haven't had with the Torpedo software. It stays connected, it's stable, it's easy to use. So even though the UA stuff looks better, I think the Torpedo software overall is a better user experience. And the Captor X has a leg up on the aux in that it's also an IR loader. Now I get why Universal Audio didn't make the aux an IR loader because their algorithms and their modeling of the cabinets and microphones is so good that they felt that you wouldn't need the IR loader. And truth be told, I haven't missed it. And using the aux, there's never been a time where I've thought, man, I wish I could use the own hammer IR pack or the Celestion IR pack or my own IRs because it sounds so good. That being said, for $1,200, I feel like they could have at least thrown it in there for people who want to use that feature. Whereas with the two notes being a more gigable option, I like that it has the IR loader function because I can make impulse responses of my own cabinet and essentially just use that on the gig. So overall, I really like the Torpedo Captor X. I think Two Notes did a really good job with this unit. I think it's built well, it sounds really good, it's got good features, and it's priced right. I also really like the Aux. It sounds incredible, it's well built, it looks good, it's got really great software. I kind of think these are for two different players. I think the Aux is for someone who's primarily working and playing at home, who has a little bit more money to spend and they want a little bit more premium product. And for me, generally having both of these in the same room, if I was recording at home, I'd probably go for the Aux over the Captor X just because it sounds a little bit better. Those reverbs, again, I can't stress how good the room sounds are with the Aux and having that 1176 compressor. It just sounds really good. But if I was buying one, which of these two units would I sink my money on? Without a doubt, the Captor X. At $550, it's such a better value than the Aux. 
it doesn't sound quite as good, but it's certainly close and close enough to use on most gigs and sessions that I find myself doing every single year. And that's the big reason behind this. I would be buying one of these to take out and gig with. I want something that is smaller, lighter, easier to travel with, a little bit more roadworthy and robust. And to me, the Captor X ticks all those boxes. What do you think about the Captor X? Let me know in the comments section down below. Do you prefer this or the Ox? Are you gonna get one? Let me know. Also, let me know what you thought about today's video in the comment section down below. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. Big thanks to Two Notes and Universal Audio for providing both of these units for me to use on the channel. I really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe down below as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Rhett Scholl, and remember there is no plan B.